So in this video, we're going to talk about how to store strings and arrays in C. And specifically, we'll talk about what's called a ragged string array. You'll sometimes also see this called a jagged string array. And when we actually see the picture of what it looks like, that will make sense where that name comes from. But to start out, let's review what C strings are. So in C, there is no string type. Instead, we represent strings with character arrays with a null character at the end of the string. So here we have two strings, one Arizona, the other has New Hampshire in the name. And in each case, that string is ended by the null character. If that null character wasn't there, then the string would continue until it found the null character. So one way we could store an array of strings would be to use a two-dimensional array, an array of arrays. So here we have an array of five character arrays of length 32. And then you can see we also initialize this with five different strings. So in memory, this looks something like this, where we have the five arrays, indexes 0 through 4, and then each of those hold a string. Now you'll notice there's a lot of wasted space. This space has been allocated because it's a large character array. And to be clear, these waste more space than you can see here, but so that I don't have to shrink this down so much that you can't read what's there. It looks like it's 16 blocks, but again, since it's an array of 32, you would have 16 more on the end here. So there's a lot of wasted space when we do it this way. And again, this is a character array of whatever length it is, but it's a string of length up until you get to the null terminator. So another way we could do this is with an array of pointers. So here I have five pointers. Notice the initializer is exactly the same, although to be clear, I'm not allocating any memory here, so that is a consideration, but initializing it is the same. So this gives me an array of five pointers, indexes zero through four, and each of those pointers points to a string. Now notice here, we've only allocated enough memory for the actual string, the characters of the string plus the null. So we're not wasting any space with the string. However, we are wasting some space here because we have this array of pointers. So if we have a machine that has 64-bit pointers, that's eight bytes. So we're throwing away eight bytes for each of these pointers. So each of these strings has eight wasted bytes at the end of it. If you're really focused on saving memory, you do wanna make sure you consider that part. So now let's take a look at this in code. So in my code, I've declared the two arrays. S1 is an array of five 32 character arrays, and S2 is an array of five character pointers. Notice the actual initializer is the same in both cases. Then I have some variables to keep track of the size of the arrays and an index variable. So I print out the strings and notice I'm printing each out the same way. I go through all five indices of the array and print out what's there as a string. But one difference is I already have the size of the arrays. However, for S2, since it's an array of pointers, it's not taking into consideration the size of the actual strings. And so I need to add however many characters are being used inside of that string. So then I'm gonna print the sizes. I print the size of S1, size of S2, and in parentheses, I'll actually print the original size of S2. That'll tell me how many spaces I'm losing due to the pointer array that doesn't hold any actual characters. So one advantage, again, of the actual array is all that's being allocated is some character spaces. The downside is not all of those indices will be used. The downside to an array of pointers is that we have the overhead of the pointer sizes. So again, you want to do a calculation to decide which is better. But let's go ahead and compile this and see what happens in our case. And when we run this, you can see that the identical contents of the two arrays gets printed out. But the size of S1 is 160 bytes, which is 5 times 32. The size of the array of pointers is 84, 40 bytes of which is the actual pointers themselves. So you can see we have a significant size savings with the array of pointers. And that would be the ragged array or the jagged array, depending on what you prefer to call it. So again, this is an idea you want to keep in your mind for when you're allocating arrays or working with strings. You want to make sure you do so in a way that makes the most sense or that wastes the least amount of memory.